Tudor City in Manhattan is a series of apartment buildings constructed in the 1920s that features the world's first residential skyscraper. Located between 2nd Avenue and 1st Avenue near 42nd Street, I would come here often while I worked at a job nearby. I would marvel at the architecture of this peaceful and cinematic neighborhood. Not far from Tudor City, just below the cliff it exists upon, is a playground named after one of the most powerful New Yorkers of the 20th century, Robert Moses. Originally, when I discovered this park, I was not sure what to make of it. Called a playground, but with no play structures, it confounded me. I could not disentangle the man from the monument, the only one named after him in New York City. The area where the playground exists became a slum as the city expanded north in the 19th century. Industry displaced the shanties along the waterfront. By the 20th century, as the city's expansion continued, an additional link between Manhattan and Long Island became imperative. It was an objective of Robert Moses as well. In 1934, he was president of the Long Island State Parkway Commission, chairman of the Triborough Bridge Authority, and the New York City Parks Commission. As the Midtown Tunnel was becoming a reality through funding by the New Deal, Moses wanted to run the Tunnel Authority as well. He had already built many of New York's parkways, bridges, and public areas. But Mayor LaGuardia would not grant Robert Moses that position. He knew of the feud between the President of the United States and Robert Moses. FDR was one of Moses's many nemesis. Moses then unsuccessfully tried to thwart its construction. He did, however, build a park near the tunnel's Manhattan Ventilation Tower. Later, half of the unnamed park was destroyed in order to build the UN headquarters. The large ventilation tower that dominates the playground and the tunnel authority that operated it would soon fall under Robert Moses' control. LaGuardia, who wanted to build the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, could find little funding from the New Deal and turned to Moses and his profitable Triborough Bridge Authority for help. With Moses now in control of the newly formed Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority, he gained control of the Midtown Tunnel and every future tunnel or bridge to be built. Robert Moses Playground sits at a strange confluence of Robert Moses artifacts. Nestled next to the UN headquarters, a major accomplishment for Moses, he secured the land and funding and managed its construction. It is also adjacent to the highway, which was known as East River Drive, while Robert Moses was building. Ironically renamed FDR Drive in 1945, shortly after the president's passing. The playground itself was named for Robert Moses in 1982, a year after he passed away. It features a small dog run, a large area for roller hockey or baseball, as well as basketball courts. Robert Moses built these places that are sculpted on the playground fence facing the East River. Institutions and public works that are beloved by millions. Yet he displaced thousands of families and destroyed entire neighborhoods with his project. He placed barriers for non-whites to access many of the beaches he built. He was an extremely intelligent visionary, but also a tyrant who demanded loyalty from his allies and sought to destroy his foes. Yet his legacy is undeniable. New York would not be the city it is today without him. If you would like to learn more about Robert Moses, please read The Power Broker by Robert Caro. I've included a link to it in the description.